Welcome to module 43 of Point Set Topology Part 1. As promised last time, today we shall study productive properties or whatever topological properties we have made, we will verify which one is productive, which one is not. That is the whole idea of today's talk. Okay. So when you are studying products, I would like to recall a few conventions and notation that we have set earlier and also introduce some more convenient notation. My fundamental idea here is that when you have finite products, it is okay to use the order, you know, the order tuple notation, Cartesian coordinate space notation. But when you go to infinite product, it is totally inconvenient and whatever you use, it will not be exactly rigorous. You will have to keep on uh, using identifications. Okay. So we will try to reduce that kind of notation as far as possible and use a logically consistent notation. And that is possible only if you think of the product space as a function space. OK, so having said that, let me start telling you what are notation. J will denote a non-empty uh, indexing set. So this is all for the entire uh, entire of this course, you can say, but definitely in this chapter. I denotes a subset of J and IC will denote the complement of I inside J. Okay. For each J in J, XJ denotes a non-empty topological space. So I have used non-emptiness twice here. Pay attention to that. Whenever I is also non-empty, Xi denotes the product space over this indexing set I, Xj's. This I here, the suffix I, is the indexing set. Okay. Remember, I use X power I superscript I only when all the Xj's are equal to X. So that's a different notation. I am not going to use that one here at all. Okay. The underlying set of Xi, I want to recall, namely, it consists of functions now, X. So I will call it as an element of the product, but it's a function. Okay. From where? From the indexing set to the disjoint union of all these sets Xi's. Okay, so any function like this will be an element of this product. So that is the underlying uh, set. Then we have these projection maps P little j from xj to x little j. What are these? Pj of any x, x is a function, remember. You evaluate x at the jth element here, j element, element j, so x of j. And this is another notation, xj. This is our usual coordinate notation. So I don't want to give up that one, but I have given up the ordered and tuple, order uh, uh, tuples and so on. That I have given up, ordered pairs and so on. Okay. So let pi, now i is capital, this also denotes xj, the entire uh, product space, to xi, which is the partial product, because i is a subset of j. This denotes the projection map defined by the same, same principle, namely, pi of x is a point in x power xi. So it's a map from i to 
the disjoint union on the on the point i of i belong to i it is xi other coordinates are forgotten that is the meaning of this projection map we also use the notation x suffix capital i to be image of pi of a consistent with this one whether it is singleton or a whole set of bunch of indices you can use that notation moreover suppose x i is a point of x capital i everything okay little x i is a point here and y now the suffix is prefix is i complement inside x i complement so i and i c are disjoint okay so you have complementary thing we shall use the notation this ordered pair xi comma yic to represent the unique element in xj with the property that pi of xi yic is xi and pic of this point is yic if i give pi and pic the point is uniquely determined and that point has a property that pi of this point is xi and pi pic of this point is yic so that is the meaning of this one okay so note that for any proper subset i of j and for any non empty subset ui of xi we have the jth little jth projection of pi inverse of ui is the whole of xj for all j in the complement of complement of i okay complement of i will pick up all the elements xj that's pi inverse of ui observe this one okay so these are basic things which you have to be familiar with then only you can make sense out of uh, the product space the central fact which will be used again and again is that the collection s pj inverse of uj where uj's are inside xj they are open and j is inside capital j so these are all variables here look at all pj inverse of uj to care that collection has this forms a subbase for the product topology on xj that is the definition of the product topology on xj okay so i am just recalling that now something more i am going to introduce here this notation let f denote the set of all finite subsets of j all finite subsets i don't need empty set so you you throw your empty set Uh, it may cause unnecessary problem. That's all. Then the collection B, which is pi inverse of U i, where U i is open in X i, and i is inside F. So i is a finite set. U i is open in X i, which just means, you know, you can take it as. Uh, to begin with, u1 cross u2 cross un, where u u i is little u i is are open in x i, but there are more open sets, okay? Then just product open sets. You take all of them, take pi inverse of those. So this will automatically contain all the finite intersections for members of here. So it will be a base. It will have more open set, no problem. So it will be a base. so this base is more convenient for me so i will use this one but this is sub base that may be also used okay these two things i will keep using you should also be noted that each pi is an open map for every non empty subset i of j the empty subset this pi doesn't make sense so that's what you have to say on non empty okay all the projection maps are open maps moreover take any member of this s what are they they look like pj inverse of uj okay for we belong to s 
pj of v is equal to xj for all but finite number of gj okay this is true actually for members of b also here it is only one j if j is i is not equal to j it will be a whole thing but here it will be like this so this is true for members of b also okay so with this convention you will see that many proofs can be written very very tersely idea becomes extremely clear the first thing i want to prove is connectivity and path connectivity are product invariant which is in the at the bottom of our list 6 and 7 okay but these these concepts were the first thing which we are considered in our chapter all right now each factor xj is a quotient of xj right open quotient actually any subjective map of continuous subjective map connectivity path connectivity of xj implies that of xj this we have seen several times okay so this part is all right it is the proof of the converse that needs to be worked out namely if if xj is connected path connected then the product xj is connected path connected once again path connectivity is straight forward suppose each xj is path connected starting with any two points x y inside x capital j you can choose path omega j 0 1 2 xj continuous function joining these points xj to yj they are inside x little j right so there you can join them so you got all these families of path is then you define one single omega from 0 1 to xj such that its jth component See, w omega t must be a function, right? From capital J into the disjoint union of all these xj's. So on the on the jth thing, you take this path omega j t. Okay. So automatically, this will be continuous function. We have verified a function is continuous if and only if all its coordinate functions are continuous. So these are continuous. So this is continuous. When you put j, when you put t equal to zero, this will give you omega j zero, which is x j. T equal to one, it will give you y j, right? For each j, that is the term thing. That means omega t of zero is x, and omega t of one is y. So it's a path joining x and y. That proves the product is path connected. So let us. now concentrate on connectivity recall that we have already proved that finite products of connected spaces connected so this was corollary 3.35 or whatever okay i don't have to show it to you we know this one very clearly not very long we proved this one all right indeed we proved a stronger result namely if x is com if if uh, y is uh, connected and the fibers are connected then x is connected in a, under any quotient topology quotient map right and using that we can prove two product of two of them is connected then three of them is and inductively any finite product is connected all right so i am going to use that one now i go to arbitrary family so xi i m s and j be a family of connected topological spaces take any point z what you should show if the connected component of that point is the whole of z whole of okay so this is my x j i am taking it as z here doesn't matter okay in short notation product be any point Okay, put a z equal to 
So I am taking a point in the product space. I want to show that. After all, I want to show the product space is connected. But what is my idea? Idea is to show that the connected component of any point is the whole space. Okay. So this is a first step here. Take A Z to be all P I complement inverse of this Z I C. Remember what is Z I C? Z I C is a point inside X I C, which is the projection of Z. Okay. Take P I C inverse of that, which is nothing but X I cross singleton Z I C. That is the notation for this. If you want to use the Cartesian coordinate uh, notation. I don't want to use it, so I have written it carefully like this. P I inverse of Z I C. The coordinates inside I, I, okay, they are dropped out. There is no mention. They could be arbitrary. But when J is inside I C, that means J is not in I. The coordinates of that point must be the the coordinates of this point. They must coincide. So that is the meaning of this P I inverse of this one. Okay, take union of all these where I is a finite set. I is belong to F. Finite subsets of J. Okay, each P I inverse of P I C inverse of J I C. This being homeomorphic to X I. Just now, I I told you it is. It looks like X I cross one single point in the complement, namely in I C. Okay, they are homeomorphic to I C. They are connected. Why? Because I is finite, and the finite product is connected. We have used. So these are each of them on the right hand side is connected. Moreover, Z is a common point to all of them. Therefore, it follows that A Z D is connected. So this argument we have used before also. Okay, it's very easy to see that A Z D is connected. Take a separation if possible. Suppose A Z D is B separation C. Where will be Z? It will be in one of B and C. The moment Z D is inside B. All these things will be inside C. Okay, that means B is empty. So if Z is inside C, B is empty. If Z is inside B, C is empty. So there is no partition. There is no separation. So this is a connected set. This is not the whole of X J, but it is very close to that. Namely, what is this closeness here? If you take the closure of this, it's the whole space. That is the claim. Okay, we shall show that A Z closure is X J. Okay, so half the stuff we have proved that this is a connected set. The second half is that its closure is the whole space. Okay, so that will complete the proof. Why? Because closure of a connected set is connected. All right. So, what is the meaning of closure is the whole space? Every non-empty open subset in X J will intersect A Z. So, that is what I have to prove. That A Z intersects every non-empty open subset U of X J. What is the meaning that U is an open subset, non-empty? Inside X J, it contains an open subset of the form P I inverse of U I for some open subset U I in X I. These 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 are the basic open sets. That is the first thing I am going to use here, where I is itself a finite set. Okay, there must be some such thing, and U I must be non-empty, open inside X I. I must be finite. Take a point W i inside this U i. This U i is non-empty, right? 
So it follows that. Look at this point W I, comma Z I C. What is the meaning of this? All the I coordinates I inside I are like W W little I. If I is inside I C, then it is W Z Z little I. That is the meaning of this point. We have defined this one. This point is clearly inside P I C inverse of Z I C because it's Z I C coordinate are this one this point. IC coordinates are this point, so it is inside this one. Also, it is inside PI inverse of UI because this WI is inside UI, so it is PI inverse of UI. Okay, so it is in the intersection. But the first set is contained inside AZ. The second set is contained inside second set. I have written just same thing, but it is contained inside U. So the whole thing, whole this point is contained in AZ intersection U. That is the end of the proof. Why? Because starting with U, I have shown that AZ intersection U is non-empty. Okay. Here is a picture. If you want picture to explain whatever I have told here. So this is an arbitrary point Z. Right, then I have bunched up this x i. I is a finite set of indexing sets. Right? Suppose it's just x one, then this looks like the x axis. Then the rest of them are y axis. The rest of them are i c. I have put. So you have divided the entire set into i c, i and i c. So draw this. This this is one plane. This is a finite uh, product of finite things, right? So this is connected. Now, if you take an arbitrary point W inside this U one inverse image, this dot 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 U one, okay, is inverse P I inverse P I is the inverse of this U I. So if you take any point like this here, P I inverse of U I. You can project back here. Actually, this why I have started with a point here, W, and this is W I C was that like this. This Y is nothing but W I here in the in the notation. Okay, its its uh, other coordinates are just the coordinates of this point. You can think of this as Y coordinate here. Y coordinate of third and this point Y are the same. Okay, so I C coordinate of this were same. So that is precisely the point here, which will be in the intersection. This was my arbitrary U. Okay, so every U contains some such set is what we have to use, namely, what are the base for the product topology? That's all. Okay, so you see the proof that product is path connect, product is connected. Has just two ideas. One is you look at a point and then take all these coordinate planes, finite coordinate planes, passing through the given point. So I am using the uh, terminologies uh, for R, R, R square, R cube, and so on. Okay, that is the only way you can pictureize, you can imagine. Coordinate planes and so on. Okay, there are no planes here. All all topological spaces are arbitrary topological spaces. Okay, so that set A J A Z is what it is dense. So that's all you have to remember. The proofs are not at all difficult. Okay. So let us do the other things next time. This this itself is a something good we have done. Other properties we shall do next time. Thank you.